thanks for tuning in. I'm Katie Kettenbaugh, the Market Development Agronomist for Cargill in Unity and North Battleford, and I'm here today with Sean Sanko from the Canola Council, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges and um, opportunities for straight cutting canola this year with the crop that's out here. So, Sean, I mean, stands are pretty thin. We've got some really short crops. A lot of growers are feeling hesitant about swathing because there's not going to be very big swaths. Um, what would you say to growers who are looking at straight cutting a thin, short stand like this one here? Well, it's definitely possible. I mean, there's trade-offs and uh, risk either way, right? Um, in one regard, uh, if you swath it, it's, it's got uh, prone to blow away. And then the other, um, straight cutting, it's, you know, it's not one kind of ideal with like a nice knit um, lodged crop. And, but this year there's, um, you know, that's, we have to deal with what we've got. So, um, you know, it's certainly still a candidate for straight cutting. Um, I'd say you'd have to get in there. You don't want to leave it stand near as long simply because wind um, will cause you issues. Um, but it's it's definitely um, possible to take a crop like this. Mm -hmm. And what are some things that growers can do to really make sure that they're kind of maximizing and, and really getting every last bushel that they can out of this crop? Well, in a lighter crop like this, um, you know, usually I'm talking about slow the combine down because you don't want to be pulling it out the back. But mm -hmm. this year it's going to be simply moving fast enough to actually keep the combine Good capacity because combines are meant to run um, at full capacity, so it might not be possible to get right up there. But um, you know, everything in good shape like your knives, your guards, it'll just flow that much better through the combine. Um, it won't be pushing the crop and causing it to, to shell and, uh, and break off. Um, just getting the hang of the header properly like, um, you real you, you really don't want to be aggressive with the wheel, you want it just enough to, to bring it in and keep it onto the table. Um, yeah, that's, that's the main point for, for straight cutting. Mm -hmm. So when growers are deciding to straight cut, they're likely going to do use a desiccant of some kind. Um, can we talk through the staging of uh, when you would apply a desiccant product? I mean, glyphosate would be one option, glyphosate and heat is another option, and then Reglon being another option. So we'll maybe start with just straight glyphosate. Yeah, so straight glyphosate would be at that, um, it's, it's considered 30% seed moisture, which equates to roughly what we call swathing time. That's 60 to 70% seed color change. So again, uh, normally down the main stem, you know, in, in those middle pods, you'd see that kind of um, speckling seed color change. That's about your timing for swathing. And that's also about your timing for application of, of glyphosate. Um, heat, I'd say heat and glyphosate, just a tiny bit later. Um, it's at 70 to 80% uh, seed color change. So just a, a bit more, you're starting to see some color change in the top pods. And then when you go to Reglone, um, it's 90% brown seed. So those top seeds, um, almost all of them will have to have uh, complete color change for proper timing on that. Mm -hmm. With lots of um, variability in some of the crops and branching too, what would you recommend growers do? I mean, in a normal year, we try to go off of the main stem, but this year there are a lot of main stems that have very few pods on them and quite a bit of branching. So is there a way a grower can kind of figure that out? <laughs> yeah, no, I'd, I'd always go back to, you know, Check the main stem first. Um, if it's like we just looked at the one earlier, it's not making sense. You know, we've got different seed color change, um, and you've got a very branch plant. It's time to start looking at those branches, um, pulling pods, and just making sure that um, they follow that same seed change um, recommendation. And then you've got at minimum the the top on the branches are, are firm to roll, but that they're also following the the seed color change um, recommendations I mentioned. Yeah, and really just checking that none of them are, are still in that watery kind yeah. of phase. Hey, yeah, yeah, excellent. Um, what other conditions should growers be aware of when they're when they're using these desiccation products? I know in the past we've had really um, smoky conditions that have slowed things down. Are there other conditions that growers should watch out for, and what can they expect if it's smoky? Well, smoky, yeah, it, um, will probably delay the the action or how long it takes from application to the time of harvest. Um, you know, really any condition that um, slows down um, just uh, growth, like if you've got cool temperatures, um, you know, overcast, cloudy, um, you know, all that kind of uh, conditions can, can also um, slow down how long it takes from application time to, to harvesting. So any final thoughts or specific concerns about growers who are harvesting a non-pod shatter variety and intending to straight cut it? Uh, just about time like you when it's ready to go you'll have to be in there and, and harvesting it it's just at more risk for, for pod shatter mm -hmm. the wind or or any other environmental conditions so 
Um, you know, there's always trade-offs if you've got um, other crops that need to come off. But if you're, if you're waiting on that, when it's time for combine, it's, it's time to go in there and take it off. Mm -hmm. Something I've been talking to growers a little bit about, too, is if they've got, um, a, you know, a few fields that are close to the same stage, then maybe spreading out the um, herbicide application or the des desiccant application so that their um, fields come in at different times could help them to really be on top of it when, when it's ready to go. Yeah, you don't want everything coming in at once. So yeah, it wouldn't hurt to have a bit of a, a time lag in there so that you can um, have your fields ready at, at different timings. Right, yeah. yep. And just to really try and pick it up as soon as it's ready to go. Yeah, as soon as it's uh, you can uh, ready to harvest, yeah. Perfect, yeah. Thank you. Great. Just a final comment about the pre-harvest herbicide application. Adding heat LQ to glyphosate will, will really speed up the dry down time. This is an especially good fit in stagey fields where we still have a lot of green weeds. So in some fields, um, some of the canola is dead ripe and some of it is entirely green still. Heat LQ will do a really good job to, to sort of speed up the dry down, especially if there are weeds in that field, so that we can get that off as quickly as possible. And another reminder that um, cool conditions uh, cloudy or smoky conditions will all slow down the dry down process. So be sure to give it a little bit of extra time uh, in your planning. One other thing that you can do to help increase the efficacy of your pre-harvest uh, herbicide application is to add a product like Cornerstone. Cornerstone is a non-ionic surfactant that will help to uh, reduce the pH in, uh, in any mix that you're using. A reduction of the pH will help the glyphosate to be more efficient. This is really um, effective if you're using water that you know has a bit more of a basic pH. Um, so another thing you can do to maximize the efficacy of your pre-harvest burndown is to add a product like Cornerstone. Cornerstone is a non-ionic surfactant that has an acidifying component, and so it can help to reduce the pH of um, slew water or groundwater that's being used in your spray solution. Having a lower uh, pH will help the glyphosate to be more effective, and so this is just one way that we can really maximize that. Thank you. Great.